Hello and welcome to Bottoms Down, Chair Yoga for Everyone. I'm Carol and I'm so glad you've joined us today. We're going to be working into our hips. So we do stay seated a lot during the day and this is just a really good way for us to open up those hips and stretch those hips a little bit. So we will be staying seated the entire time. Later this afternoon, we will upload the video to our YouTube channel at Bottoms Down Chair Yoga. You can check it out, this video, along with all the others. And while you're there, if you haven't already, please click on that big red subscribe button. It helps us out, plus it just lets you know when new videos are uploaded to our channel. All right, let's get started. So we're going to start in our chair and just think about moving forward just a little bit so that I don't want you leaning back. We're going to lift up so our shoulders are down out of our ears, but I want you to think about feeling like there's a string on, your, on the top of your head and you're just lifting your spine nice and long. And if you'll notice, the minute you do that, does your core not engage? Does that belly button not automatically kind of go to the spine? So you've got a double thing happening there, all right? So keep that belly button nice and tight. Next, we're going to think about grounding our feet. So think about we've got, to got four pressure points kind of in our feet, behind the big toe, behind the little toe, and two points on the heels. So think about having all four of those points of both feet firmly grounded to the earth. And then finally, let's think about our sits bones. So we want to be equally weighted on the chair. So if you feel like you're kind of leaning one way or the other, then make any adjustments that you need so that you feel like you're nice and square on the chair. Let's flip our palms up. Close your eyes. And just breathe. So focusing your heart center, focusing on your heart center, letting go of everything outside of the room. Now just begin to notice your breath, just feeling that natural inhalation and exhalation. Now let's elongate the breath. So we're going to inhale a little more deeply and exhale a little more completely. We're going to move into our diaphragmatic breath, also known as the belly breath. As you inhale, the belly extends because we're filling the lungs from the bottom up, engaging our diaphragm. And then as you exhale, you're going to pull your belly button to your spine as you push the air up and out of the lungs. Go ahead and do that a few times at your own pace. And breathe normally. We're going to continue with that diaphragmatic breath. We're going to inhale to four counts and exhale to five counts, something like this. Inhale two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four, five. Inhale two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four, five, and breathe normally. Bring your hands to your heart. Set your intention for today's practice. One more breath. Bring your hands back down to your thighs. Open your eyes. Drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Drop your chin towards your chest. Drop your left ear towards your left shoulder. And 
and chin to chest. Go ahead and look forward. Let's look over our right shoulder. Look center. And the other shoulder. And look center and roll your shoulders up, back, and down. Ah, right, that feels so good. Up, back, and down. And reverse it. Ah. All right, very, very good. Let's take our hand and bring it on the outside of that knee. We're going to take our opposite hand, place it on the chair, extend, and turn. And just look over the back of your chair. And let's look center and let's do the other side. We're going to bring this hand on the outside of that knee, opposite hand on the chair, extend the spine long and turn and look over the shoulder. And look center and roll those shoulders. Let's do it one at a time. And release it. Place your hands on the thighs, pull the belly button to spine, round the shoulders, tuck the chin, let the head fall. Moving into our cat pose. And we're going to lift up, thumbs pointing back towards the back wall into our cow pose. This is a version, right? We have a few versions that we do. Let's do that one more time. Round it down into your cat pose. Lift it up into cow. Very nice. Ah, and release it. Final, final roll of those shoulders. Just releasing any tension that may have built up in those shoulders. Reverse that roll. That's all it's for. And release. All right. Very good. How's everybody feeling? Checking in. See how everything's going. All right. We're going to, first of all, do some hip circles. So we have some fluid. This we have that that hips are a big ball and socket joint, right? So and there's some fluid in there that helps lubricate that joint that makes that movement a little more smoothly in that joint. So we're going to just do a little bit of hip circles, which is it just kind of activates that that fluid. All right. Okay, so we're going to start with our right leg and we're going to bring that knee up. Now, through this whole thing, if you want to hold behind that thigh, that is just fine. That's absolutely fine. But I do want you to think about core is solid and bring your head high, right? So we want to lengthen through that spine. All right. Now, I'm just all I'm going to do is either I'm going to grab on the inside of that thigh, maybe that might work best, and I'm going to bring it out down and around. You feel that and up. Now I am not changing the shape of my leg at all. All right, so this isn't, I'm not, you know, bending my knee or extending my leg or anything like that. The, the whole shape is staying exactly the same way. And I'm going to open it up and bring it around. Now I'm going to reverse it. So maybe you want to put your hand on the outside of that leg now. It's all good. It really doesn't matter. A hand placement on the leg doesn't matter. You don't even have to have the hands on the leg, right? You can just do it like this. It's all good. Your choice. All right. Bring that leg down and take a little break. Okay, we're going to do the other side. So remember, you've got choices here. The main thing I care about is this integrity of this leg stays. The shape stays the same. We aren't moving the knee. The knee is not bending more or extending. We're just working into that hip joint. You should be feeling that hip joint, right? And let's reverse it. Keep it going. Yeah, you got it. Keep going. All right, and put that leg down. Okay. All right, so we're going to move into our crescent lunge. Now, if you've been with me before, you know what a crescent lunge is. If this is your first class, don't worry. I'm going to guide you through the whole thing. So we're going to take our right knee. We're going to open it nice and wide. All right, so you kind of feel that inner thigh stretching already. We're going to take this knee, and we're going to let it fall down towards the floor. All right, so here is version one of your crescent lunge. That knee is straight down to the floor. You should be feeling quite the stretch in this quadricep, 
Also, we're going to get into that hip flexor a little bit. So now, if it works for you, you're going to push that foot back behind you a little bit. Now, I'm still up on my toes, right? My heart is still lifted, so I'm not letting my heart fall forward. This is one of the things that happens a lot when you feel too much stretch here. So instead of leaning forward, what I would rather you do is bend your knee down a little bit. So if pushing your leg back is too much, you're feeling too much of a stretch here, I would rather you bend this knee down than relieve that stretch here, okay? Because now you're still getting the stretch. If you lean forward, you totally remove the stretch completely. Does that make sense? All right? So I'm keeping my heart lifted. I'm, I'm changing the direction or the, the stretch in my thigh here by the leg, by the, how much I have my knee bent. All right, beautiful. Face forward. Now, this same leg we were just working, that's the leg I want you to extend out in front of you. Your toes are to the ceiling. So we're going to move into pyramid pose. Extend the spine long. Let that heart fall forward. Feel the stretch in the hamstring, right? Our back is flat. We're not rounding our shoulders. So you should be looking kind of up and out. Keep that back flat. Let's come up and we're going to do that again. Extend the spine long. Belly is tight. Hands are on the thighs if you wish. Let that heart fall forward. There's your seated pyramid pose. Oh yeah, feels good. One more breath and come up. Now don't move that leg. All right, we're going to add on to our pyramid pose. So the opposite arm of the leg that's extended. So for me, my left leg is extended, so my right arm is going to come up. You got it? All right. So my, sh my shoulder is down. So what tends to happen when we start bringing that arm up to the ceiling, you see how my shoulder, bring that shoulder down, right? So we want the shoulder down, but the arm is extended. As high to that ceiling as you can get it. Let's take this hand and we're going to bring it down. Try to touch the wall in front of you. Keep the back flat. Now take that hand and bring it to the outside of the extended leg. Oh yeah. Breathing into it. One more breath and come up. Let's do that again. Extend that arm long. Act like you're going to touch the wall in front of you. Bring that hand down to the outside of that leg. Now, what do I care about in here? I care that this leg stays straight. Not, not a, a go, go ahead and come up. I don't want you to lock out that knee. Let's do it again. But I do want the leg straight. So I don't want you ex bending the knee to try to see how far down you can get the hand. I don't care but I do want it on the outside of that leg, okay? So you should be feeling the side waist of the leg, of the arm that's extended, and the hip and the um, hamstring of the leg that's extended. And come up. Does that make sense? How do you feel, right? All right, whoo! Man, oh man, I don't know about you, but I felt that one. Okay, let's do the other side. So we're gonna start with that nice hip opener. We're gonna let this knee fall down into our version of crescent lunge. You've got options, don't forget, lift your heart up. Oh yeah, feel the stretch. And just remember, you know, if you can straighten this leg, that kind of like the back of the kneecap towards the ceiling, you're gonna maximize the stretch, lift that heart up. We don't want the heart forward. We want the heart lifted, head to the ceiling, release it, and let's do that again. I know, there's lots to think about. Ooh, yeah. One more breath and release it. Face forward. This is the leg we're going to work, okay? Extend it out in front of us. We're going to start in pyramid pose. So I'm going to extend my spine long and let my heart fall forward. All right, let's come up. Remember, back is flat. Extend and hinge, keeping that back nice and flat. And breathing, this leg is straight and come up. All right, we're gonna add on, are you ready? Opposite arm is coming up to the ceiling. Extend up, shoulder is down. 
Extend that hand out like you're trying to touch the wall in front of you. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Bring that hand to the outer edge of the extended leg. It does not matter how far down that hand is on the leg. I don't care and come up. What I care about is that you keep the legs straight and you keep your back straight. Up we go. You're just going to maximize the stretch. If we're going to do it, let's get the most out of it, don't you think? Bring that hand to the outside of that leg. Oh, yeah. We're breathing. And release it. We've got one more. Extend up. Extend out, keep the back flat, keep the leg straight, bring that hand down to the outer edge of that leg. We're breathing into it. One more breath and come up. Take a little break. Whew, how do you feel, right? Some pretty good stretches happening in the legs, in the hamstrings, and in the hips. Okay, we're going to uh, move into, it's actually a seated lunge. And then we're going to do some external rotation in our legs. So the first thing I want you to do is bring your knee into your chest. And then I'm going to place my hands on the outside of the shin and I'm going to pull. All right. So there's a nice little stretch just to begin with. I love this one. Okay. Now flex your foot. We're going to push with our heel. Place your hands behind your thighs. Push through that heel. Straighten that leg as much as works for you. Bring that leg down, put it on the floor, and bring it in, and squeeze. I'm going to move a little further to the edge of my chair, and squeeze it. Just because when I do, I put my leg down like in pyramid, flex the foot, extend it long, and place that leg down. I had a hard time because my chair was in the way. All right, bend that knee. Oh, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, flex the foot. Extend, press, 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 and place that foot on the floor. All right, we're going to add on. Remember, you can keep doing what we were just doing, but if you want, we're going to bring that knee in. Now, here's the change. I'm going to externally rotate that knee out, but notice I'm going to keep this shape, all right? So I don't want you to... Um, to start trying to twerk the knee at all, right? So as I'm externally rotating that knee, the whole leg is kind of moving with. Does that make sense? All right, now I'm going to do the same thing. Flex the foot, extend. Now my knee is out, right? My whole leg is turned out. Place that foot on the floor. Woo! Now turn your toes to the ceiling, bring it in and squeeze. Let's do that again. Externally rotate. Press that heel out and away. Place that foot on the floor. Toes to the ceiling. Bring that knee in one final time. Externally rotate that knee is out. Press that heel towards the wall in front of you. Place that leg down. My toes are still out to the side. Now my toes are to the top to the ceiling. Bring that knee in. Squeeze and release. Whoo, how does that feel? <laughs> I know, right? That was a good one. Okay, let's do the other side. So here we go. Bring that knee in and squeeze. Externally rotate. Hold under that thigh if you wish. Press. So I'm pushing through my heel. My toes are pointed out. Place that foot on the floor. Now turn those toes up and bring that knee in and squeeze. Externally rotate. Press through that heel. Place that foot on the floor. Tang those toes to the ceiling, bring that knee in. We have one more. Externally rotate, extend, place that foot on the floor, bring the toes to the ceiling, bring the knee in, and release. All right, how's everybody feeling? Grab a little water if you want it. We're moving on. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is a forward fold, okay? It's a seated forward fold, so we're going to take our feet and just heel toe them nice and wide. Now here's the important thing about this, this uh, pose. You want your knees in alignment with the toes. So if you're here 
and all of a sudden you begin to feel your knees coming in because it feels like it's too much of a stretch for your inner thighs, just heel toe your feet together a little bit. That's fine. I would way much rather you have your less of a, of a straddle, but that your knees are in alignment with your toes. Okay. So this is something that you've just got to kind of see what's going on with your body and see how it feels. All right. Everybody set. Are we ready? We're going to extend our spine long. We're going to pull our belly button to our spine. Place your hands on your thighs and let your heart fall forward. Keep the back flat. Now, just your version, right? So I encourage you to start, keep your back flat and keep your heart, excuse me, your head above your heart, okay? So let's just, everybody be here. You've got your hands here on the thighs for support. Now, tuck your chin and slowly roll back up to a seated position, okay? And let's do that one more time, just like that. Extend the spine long. Let that heart fall forward, keeping the back flat. Stop at that 90 degrees. And we're going to roll up. Okay. Let's go ahead and heel toe your feet back together. So that is a version, and that's a great version. And if you want to stay in that version, please do. If you want to come with me, what we're going to do is we're going to straddle our chair. Okay, so now I'm my seat is way back and I'm again I'm readjusting so that my knees are right in alignment with my toes okay so that's the piece that's super important okay I'm gonna place my hands on my chair I'm gonna extend my spine long and I'm gonna let my heart fall forward so keep your hands on your chair for this first one just to see how everything feels, letting your heart fall, letting your heart fall, and checking out, seeing how that feels through the hips, the inner thighs. Let's tuck our chin and roll up slowly. All right, can we do that again? Extend the spine long, let the heart fall forward. Now remember, this is a great version. You've got your hands on chair for support. If it works for you and you want to bring your hands to the floor and let your head fall, only if it works for your body, right? Only if it works for you. We're going to take a deep breath in and on an exhale, we're going to roll up slowly. Belly is tight. Checking in. How do you feel? Does that make you dizzy? If it makes you dizzy, please stay in this version. But if you're good, we're going to do it one more time. You choose. Lift and hinge. Oh yeah, feel that. Stretching, 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 stretching. Let that head fall. Maybe your hands are on the floor. Maybe your head is forward. One more breath. Tuck the chin. Roll up slowly, slowly, slowly. Ah, he'll tie those feet back together. Oh yeah. How do you feel? Man, oh man. That feels pretty, uh, pretty open for me. <laughs> I felt that a lot. Okay, so we're going to finish up with a seated pigeon pose, Garudasana. So I've talked about pigeon pose, I mean, um, eagle pose. I think I said pigeon. We're going to finish up with eagle pose, Garudasana. And I think I've talked about potentially us doing an eagle pose, so now's the time. Yay, here we are. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be a little bit forward in my chair. And we're going to start with our eagle legs. So this leg is going to stay exactly in the position where it is, okay? So I'm not going to lean it in. I'm not letting my knee come in. I'm not bringing my foot in. I'm going to leave it right where it is. This leg, I'm going to cross over ankle to ankle, okay? Now we've done this before in pigeon pose, haven't we? So you're kind of familiar with this, these legs. Okay, now we're going to add our eagle arms. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cross wrist to wrist. The leg that's bent, that's the wrist that you want to be forward. Okay. So this is a version. I'm going to extend my spine long. I'm pulling my belly button to my spine and I'm going to let my heart fall forward into version one of Eagle Pose. Garudasana. All right, and we're going to come up 
and we're going to release. Leave your legs where they are. All right, now we're going to add another version of Eagle Arms. So, and, and again, this one is fine. If this one works best for you, it's great. You just stay right here. If you want to uh, move to the next version of Eagle Arms, we're going to put our, our forearms parallel to one another. Now, the hand of the knee that's bent, all right, is going to come underneath. And now I've got the either the backs of my hands are together or my palms are together. But if your palms are together, your wrists can't be bent, okay? So if you're here and your, your wrists are all uh, bent, just take the backs of the hands together or come back to cross at wrists, right? It's all good. Okay, now if you're in eagle arms, extend up and forearms away from the face. You should feel a pretty good stretch into the chest and the arms. Lift the spine and let your heart fall forward into eagle pose, seated eagle pose with eagle arms. Woo, yeah. One more breath coming all the way up. Unravel the arms and unravel the legs. <sighs> Take a break. That's a pretty intense pose right there. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. So I'm gonna take this ankle and I'm gonna cross it over. Remember, now I'm gonna cross my wrist, so the wrist of the knee that's uh, bent is the one that's in front. Let's extend the spine long, pull the belly button in, and let our heart fall forward. All right, belly button to spine, come on up. Leave your legs right where they are. Let's move to those eagle arms. Are you ready? Remember, the arm of the knee that's bent is the one that's going to come underneath. Backs of the palms are together or the fronts of the palms are together. Lift up. Bring those arm, forearms away from your face. Extend the spine and let your heart fall forward. Oh my goodness, what a stretch this one is. One more breath. Come up. Unravel your arms and unravel your legs. How do you feel? Ah, <sighs> right. I know. Okay, last thing we're going to do is pigeon pose. We know pigeon pose very, very well. Kaputasana. We're going to either cross ankle to ankle or ankle to knee. Extend the spine long. Let the heart fall forward. I know. You should feel really good at this point. We are open. We have opened up those hips. Let's go ahead and lift up, rock our baby. And we're gonna do that again. Remember, if you like to have your elbow on the knee, your chin on the fingers, and give it a gentle press, that's a great option. But you have to smile. That's a requirement. <laughs> All right, come up and rock your baby. Like I'd know if you weren't smiling anyway, right? All right, last version. Extend the spine long. Hands are out, 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 and then they fall down towards the floor. Let the head fall. Just feel the stretch. And come up. Let's do the other side. Last thing. Here we go. Ankle to ankle or ankle to knee. Extend the spine long. Let that heart fall forward. Version one. Oh, boy, I feel this one. So good. All right, rock that baby. Version two, if you like it, let's do it. And smile. All right, let's rock that baby again. Final version, we're gonna extend the spine long. Let that heart fall forward. Our hands are coming out towards the wall in front of us. And down they go, and we're breathing. All right, go ahead and sit back in your chair. We made it, we made it, we made it. Close your eyes or soften your eyes. Place your hands on your thighs, palms facing up. Take a deep breath in. And a full breath out. Live with optimism. 
You can offer hope when others trade in nothing but despair. You can live with optimism when others are mired in pessimism. Lots of people gain short-term profit by constantly spreading doom and gloom, but that doesn't mean they're particularly insightful. If you expect life to get better, you'll be seen as naive. Yet if history is any indication, you'll also be right. Yes, very awful things happen from time to time, but on each and every occasion, the vast majority of people find their way beyond the difficulties and end up even better off than before. Life constantly produces great challenges, yet life also offers great meaning and fulfillment in overcoming those challenges, and most people are happy to embrace that offer. At this moment, billions of unique, creative, resourceful people are working, each in their own way, to make life better. There's an exceedingly good chance they'll succeed. Drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Extend the left arm out. Flip the palm towards the ceiling. and release it. Drop your chin towards your chest and release it. Drop your left ear towards your left shoulder. Extend the right hand out. Flip the palm to the ceiling and release it. Bring your hands to your heart. Honoring one another, we say Namaste. Thank you so much for joining today. We really appreciate it. And if you would, go to our YouTube channel, uh, Bottoms Down Chair Yoga. Click on that red subscribe button, and we will see you next time.